Good morning. I sincerely regret that I cannot join you for this important conference and to meet personally with so many people who do so much for aviation safety. But I am delighted that I'm still able to simulate my presence in London and welcome you to the meeting and to thank you all for all that you do and to encourage you to do even more with flight simulator technology to further improve aviation safety. British playwright George Bernard Shaw famously wrote that England and America are two countries separated by the same language. But England and America and all the countries represented here have much in common, including a desire to use the common language of flight simulation to improve aviation safety. The NTSB's interest in flight simulators dates back to the late 1960s with our recommendations to perform engine out training in simulators rather than in airplanes. Now, simulators are commonly used not just for engine out and other emergency training, but for CRM training and much more. I know that the NTSB is not the first to suggest that the next frontier in simulator training is addressing loss of control. Internationally, that has been the most severe hull loss causal factor over the past 10 years. And in our investigations, we saw loss of control most recently in the 2009 Colgan Air crash in which a Q400 approached a stall and the captain reacted inappropriately to the stick shaker. And we're seeing loss of control in many general aviation accidents, which is why it's good to see your discussion tomorrow on using simulators for general aviation training. Since I became a member of the NTSB in 2004, we've made a number of recommendations to address loss of control accidents. These include requiring air carriers to provide pilots opportunities to practice high altitude stall recovery techniques while minimizing inappropriate or negative training. Improving simulator fidelity for more realistic stall and upset recovery training and after the Colgan investigation, we issued additional recommendations calling for scenario-based stall training that includes stalls that are unexpected and involve uncommanded autopilot disconnects. We've also called for operators of stick pusher equipped aircraft to provide pilots with pusher familiarization training. We've noted in recent investigations that one of the big challenges simulators can help us overcome is the over-reliance on automation. I don't need to tell you all that while simulators are more important than ever, the quality of the instructors is just as important as the training curriculum and equipment. So I applaud the Flight Simulation Group for looking at instructor performance and standardization. And as you're discussing this week, simulators can be invaluable training tools for maintenance technicians as well. We all know high fidelity is so crucial. Realistic scenarios that replicate real world conditions, including icing, are needed. It is imperative to work with human factors experts to make sure instruction is effective and that it does not introduce negative training. U.S. General George S. Patton famously said, never tell people how to do things. Tell them what to do and they will surprise you with their ingenuity. I can't think of a better way to close my remarks to a group of the best minds in flight simulation. I won't tell you how to improve simulation in aviation. I know that you will continue to surprise us with your ingenuity. Enjoy the conference.